let's go ahead and understand the dictionary definition of data types. A data type is an attribute of data which tells the compiler how the programmer intends to use the data. Data types define the operations that can be done on the data, the meaning of the data, and the way values of that type can be stored. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dictionary definition of a literal value. A literal value, also called a literal, is a value that's written directly in the source code as opposed to being the result of some other expression, such as referencing a variable or a constant. Think of a literal value as something you literally provide in your script. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the common data types you'll be using in GDScript. In GDScript, you'll find yourself using strings, numbers, usually referred to as integers, floats, booleans, and the null value. Here are some pseudocode to show you how these values are represented directly in the code. Notice how hello world, or the string value of hello world, is contained in double quotations. The double quotations are important because it lets the compiler know that this is in fact a string value. For numbers, notice how we can have negative and positive integers along with the number zero. One thing to keep in mind is that there are no decimal points, unlike the float values. Float values are similar to integer values, the only difference is the decimal point. For booleans, you only have two values, the true and false value. Lastly, for no, you just have no written out exactly as that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the string data type. String is a data type used in programming and is used to represent text rather than numbers. It is comprised of a set of characters that can also contain spaces and numbers. Here are a few examples of what a string literal would look like typed out in GDScript. The first one is hello world. Notice the double quotations. Next we have the sentence I have zero cats. Notice how we can use numbers as well in our string literals. And lastly we can have a string of just numbers. However keep in mind that we cannot use these for mathematical operations. One thing to keep in mind is that string numbers do not have the same value as integer values. For example, the string value 1 plus the string value of 1 does not equal the integer 1 plus the integer 1. One thing to keep in mind is that string values do not equal integer values when it comes to numbers. So the string value of 1 plus string value of 1 will behave differently than the integer value of 1 plus the integer value of 1. In the case of the integer value, 1 plus 1 will equal 2, whereas the string value of 1 plus the string value of 1 will equal 11. The compiler will just combine the two strings and put them into a single string, so 1 with the other string value 1 next to it. Next, we have the integer data type. An integer is a data type that represents some range of mathematical whole numbers. Different programming languages have different ranges. This is the range Godot has. You are allowed to use any of the integer values in this range right here. This is Godot's integer range. In Godot, this is the mathematical range you are allowed to use. In GDScript, if you go above the maximum or below the minimum in the mathematical range, you will overflow and wrap around. For example, if you take the maximum value and add 1, what you'll do is you'll overflow, wrap around, and come out with the minimum value in the range. Let's take a look at what overflow and wrap around means. So if you take the minimum value, subtract 1, what you will do instead is get the maximum value for that range. That is what an overflow and wraparound looks like. The same can be true for taking the maximum value possible, and when you add the value of 1, the opposite of this can be true. If you take the maximum value and add 1, what you will do is wrap around to the lowest value possible. Let's go ahead and take a look at other integer literal examples. As you can see, we can do positive numbers, negative numbers, and the zero value. Again, keep in mind that integers are whole numbers, 
Basically, they are numbers without a decimal point. Next in the list is the float data type. A float data type is a floating point number, which means it is a number that has a decimal place. Floats are used when you want more precision. Here are a few examples of float literals. 12.32, negative 5.01, and 0, 0.0. Keep in mind that all float values have a decimal point. Without the decimal point, what you will do instead is turn these numbers into integer numbers. Next is the Boolean data type. The Boolean is a data type that has one of two possible values, either true or false. The true or false values are used to represent two truth values of logic and Boolean algebra. In GDScript, when converted to numeric values, false becomes zero and true becomes one. If you were to convert these into float values, false would become 0.0, .0 while true becomes 1.0. Keep that in mind. Booleans are pretty simple. Here are examples of what a Boolean literal would look like written out in GDScript. They're fairly straightforward. All you have to do is type either true or type false. Notice that there are no double quotations around these as that would turn them into string values. Last is the null data type. The null data type is used to represent the absence of data. In GDScript, null is an empty data type that contains no information and cannot be assigned any other value. Nulls are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is type out null to the compiler to let it know that this is a null data type. That's it for this episode. 